In Transformers The Last Night, we were introduced to numerous new Transformers, particularly the Knights of Cybertron. One of the most iconic Transformers from the original Transformers movie, Barricade made his return to pick up his beef with Bumblebee. Cogman. Cogman and Sir Edmund Burton could have easily had a spin-off Transformers film of their own. Cogman could be a major cog in the wheel of the Transformers cinematic universe and of course he's a headmaster as well. One of my favourite Decepticons was killed off in Transformers Dark of the Moon, but he made a shock appearance in Transformers The Last Night, Megatron holding Starscream's head from the Battle of Chicago. Could Starscream be revived? Now you may have thought Quintessa got her comeuppance in Transformers The Last Night, but let me tell you, there's more to Quintessa than meets the eye. <laughs> you see what I did there? In the previous four Transformers films, fans have been about hearing Bumblebee's voice and in Transformers The Last Night, B speaks for the first time. He died in Transformers. He then survived in Revenge of the Fallen, only to die again in Dark of the Moon. And then he became Galvatron, but who remembers that anyway? What I'm getting at is Megatron survives in Transformers The Last Night. All hail Megatron. Quintessa may have been the main villain in Transformers The Last Night, but there was one other villain, one planet-sized villain that has yet to be awoken. Yes, Transformers The Last Night introduced us to Unicron. Optimus Prime lived up to his reputation of being the baddest robot on the planet as Prime sliced and diced Decepticons without a moment's remorse. This version of Prime is even willing to kill his own brother in arms, Bumblebee. This is by far the most ruthless version of Optimus Prime we have seen in the Transformers movie franchise, or should I call him Nemesis Prime? And of course, five Transformers movies and Michael Bay still has not been able to blow up Cybertron. Cybertron survives. <laughs>